Okay, we're ready. Um, so we will start with our opening statements, and we will hear uh, first from Mr. Miller. Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad to have this opportunity to be here tonight in the Gilbert Great Hall. What a beautiful place. Um, with that being said, um, I'm running on three things, integrity, trust, transparency, and values of a small town. And right now, with that integrity and the trust and transparency, it seems like as a county we're doing the bare minimum. That needs to be stepped up, and I think I'm the man for that. I know I'm the man for that. So, you know, uh, with the trust and transparency, we need to make sure that people know what's going on. Uh, the general public needs to know what we're doing as a commission. And with integrity, we as a commission, we need to listen to the general public, let you have a seat at the table and hear what you have to say. So I, uh, I'm excited about this and I appreciate everybody being here and let's get it on. Mr. Cozens. I too appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight and your attendance. I, uh, my wife and I started a cabinet business 35 years ago in Cedar City. And it was difficult. It was a recession back in 1987, and, and uh, we had to scrape and sacrifice. We ate dinner at our folks' house for over a year because we couldn't afford food. Our business needed our dinner money. And we learned a lot of lessons in that building that business. We sold that business three years ago to my son, Brad. Um, but the lessons we learned in that business along the way of frugality, problem solving, meeting payroll, um, getting along with other subcontractors, all those lessons you learned building a business, um, I made a decision 10 years ago to get involved in public service because I realized then how important it is to have more business people involved in government and less politicians. I think every politician ought to have to build a business and learn what it's like to sacrifice and do that and how important tax dollars are. Um, that has led me to, to four different things, protect the taxpayer, protect our quality of life, prevent government overreach and, and provide infrastructure, especially water, to our citizens. And I hope to uh, help everyone in Iron County uh, realize those same opportunities. Thank you. Um, our first question, we will start with Mr. Cousins and then Mr. Miller will follow. As mentioned, uh, this great hall was filled with several hundred people last year to hear from the Central Iron County Water Conservancy <coughs> District. What are your short-term and long-term plans to address the critical need for water? So I served on the Central Iron County Water Conservancy District for eight years, um, starting in 2012 to 2020. Uh, it was a great opportunity. It's a steep learning curve. It took about two years for me to really get up to speed to learn the issues, and I feel like I'm a quick learn, but it was, it was, it's complicated. Um, I've been involved in building uh, as five out of the eight recharge projects between Parowan and Cedar, Cedar Valley and Enoch. Um, Worked with the, with the farmers, with the LEPA and LISA systems to help them be more efficient with the water they use and also importing water from the West Desert. The pipeline is something I was very in, involved with um, in, the, in the years, I think it was about 2016 through 19. We had a lawsuit with Utalianite, Sitla, and uh, Beaver County. And uh, we won that lawsuit. It's, it, that water was adjudicated to Iron County, Central Iron County Water Conservancy District by a court of law. And, and they're working through the process now to get that water delivered to our valley. Uh, it's gonna be necessary to sustain the growth we have and, uh, and help our citizens and, and help our kids and grandkids be able to live here and, and, and Thank you. have a life. We will now move on to Mr. Miller. Okay, uh, as far as water concern, there's been a lot done. And uh, you know, this pipeline coming over from Wawa Valley and Pine Valley, it's definitely in need. They've worked on it for a lot of years and there's, there's been great process, uh, progress made in that. Uh, we do need it, but let's be honest, it's a long ways out. It's millions of dollars away. We need to we need to have a plan A, we need to have a plan B, and we better have a plan C. Plan A does not always work. Not saying it won't, but what if it doesn't? We need to have something in order in case it fails us somehow for our future of our children. So I'm all for the Pine Valley water. I you know, the Water Conservancy District has done a good job with that. But we're still a long ways away. So let, let's let's work on getting a structure put together. Let's get a plan, and and let's manage it. And make sure it happens. Thank you. The planned location of the Iron County Jail is on Auto Mall Drive. Do you support this location of the new jail? Why or why not, Mr. Miller? Um, you know what? Um, the jail's going to have to go somewhere. 
There's no doubt about it. There's going to be some unhappy people no matter where we put it. Um, but with that being said, when you talk about them all drive, I'll go back to the last debate we discussed this a little bit about. Um, it's not the same place that was set on a on a map saying this is where the new jail is going to go. It changed to a different 40 acre location. Therefore, it's put a burden on these people in Fiddlers right now because they're going to lose roof, rooftops going from where it's going now that they're proposed is an R1 zone. So, you know, am I for it? Not at that exact location, no. Um, I've, I spent a lot of time in the jail uh, talking to jailers and the sheriffs and the, and the deputies, and I spent many hours with them. And I can tell you what, we need to find the right place, and we need to continue looking for the right place. I don't think it's the right place right now. Mr. Cousins. Uh, it's interesting. The last debate I had with Mr. Kidder, uh, both of us sitting up here, both in that debate, said that we were okay with it at either location, the Smead or the, or the uh, Fiddler's site. I do support the Fiddler's side. I know there's some opposition to that, but uh, as you look at, if you actually go to the, the site where we've looked at, we're actually looking at 15 acres there. Um, it may work, it may not. It's, it's ultimately up to Cedar City Council to approve a zone change and a conditional use permit. If that doesn't work, we'll regroup and, and look at all our options, and that's what we're doing right now. But uh, it's, a, it's an emotional topic. It's something that's... Uh, that you, you know, we've had a jail on Main Street for 35 years. That was the last cabinet job I did before I started my own business. And so I know, I know what it's like there. It's, it's something we have to do, and we have to, um, uh, we have to take care of this before we get in some legal trouble because our jail is old and it's falling apart, and it has to go somewhere. And it doesn't matter where we put it, there's going to be opposition. Thank you. Our next question is, affordable housing is scarce in southern Utah. What are your immediate plans to increase the availability of affordable housing in Iron County? Mr. Cousins, we'll start with you. So we've done a lot of things with this. Uh, we passed a R4K ordinance in the county recently. And if you guys, um, when you're in Parowa next, drive south of the KB Express. There's a little subdivision down there that's got 4,000, 3,500 to 4,000 square foot lots. It's about 80% owner-occupied, beautiful yards, well taken care of, small yards, they use little water. Um, there's a lot of pride in the ownership there. But this R4K ordinance allows people to build a smaller home on a smaller lot, which takes less water. It makes sense. Our kids cannot go from zero to 500,000 on a home. They've gotta have a place where they can go to, build something, build equity, and then maybe move up later if they want to, and others that, that want to have home ownership. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Um, yeah, there needs, to, you know, I know that there's some solutions that are being worked on, and, and he's spoken of one that they've done. Mm. Um, I'm not a big fan of smaller lots, smaller houses and stuff. What I am a fan of is getting, making it affordable for the younger generation to be able to afford. Um, smaller lots, more lots per acre, puts more water out there. So to say you're saving water because you have smaller lots, it's not necessarily true because now you have more families in each acre lot. So that's something to be considered. But, um, you know, we I don't know the exact plan at this point, but there needs to be some kind of plan put together that we can manage to help make it more affordable for our younger generations and anyone to afford a home right now because it's ridiculous. Uh, you know, the people in the real estate and stuff, you see it, it's crazy. And we all see it as a citizen. So uh, another plan that needs to be put into place with the people who do the best at that. All right, thank you. As Iron County grows, the need for new infrastructure and county services will increase. How do you plan to address the growing needs for roads, public transit, and county services? Mr. Miller, you first. Uh, yeah, we're definitely lacking in that department with infrastructure. Our roads, uh, they're not su sufficient right now for what we have with this growth going on. Uh, you take the take the intersection up there by Walmart, you know, uh, that's crazy that, it, that we're just not built up. We need to improve the infrastructure 100%. We need to widen the roads. We need to make new new roads around the county, around the, the city and everything. And I know the city uh, is working on a master plan to do such. But we definitely have to keep up with the times because we're going to have way too many people in this uh, county right here and not the infrastructure to facilitate what they need. And it's ugly right now. So that is something that needs to be put into a plan. And I don't think for the county side that I don't know 
but I haven't seen any plans for that yet. So it needs to be worked on, and uh, yeah, the commission needs to do their job and make sure it gets done. Thank you. Mr. Cozens? You know, we're working on the general plan all the time. There's been some talk about it not being updated for long, but every time we update an element of that plan, it's updated. We have probably 15 different things we're working on right now. We're working on road standards, these subdivisions. We want to make sure that they're built correctly so that the, the county has to take over or the cities have to take over those roads after the development's done, and, and they have to be held to a certain standard so they can hold up and not be a burden on the taxpayer. We've worked on the, uh, the uh, Beltway from 5700 West. That was the first thing I did when I got elected was we worked on that to obtain uh, right-of-ways and easements and different planning so that we can put a new belt route around going out by the sod farm and around by Enoch and eventually have a new, new um, interchange there at, uh, by Enoch. Um, there's, there's always things we're talking about. We meet regularly with different leaders in the community. UDOT, obviously the, the South Interchange is a problem. That's something that UDOT um, it controls on that one. Uh, we, and we lobby them all the time for, for that improvement there. Thank you. Um, I know you both touched on this a little bit already, but if you'd like to expand, uh, do you have a plan to address the extreme traffic congestion caused by the intersection of Cross Hollow Road and Providence Center Drive? <laughs> <laughs> You guys jumped the gun a little bit on that, but Mr. Cousins, we'll start with you. Well, I mentioned that. We meet all the time with UDOT um, in Iron County Coordinated Council with the different mayors, different elected leaders, UDOT. We have meetings all the time. They have different priority lists on who is in, 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 in line. We, we are putting extreme pressure. I know that the mayors of, of uh, the different municipalities in this valley are, are putting lots of pressure on UDOT, but that is a UDOT-controlled interchange and that's about all we can do. But we have, have had lots of meetings and put a lot of pressure on that, uh, on the, on that entity, UDOT, to, to improve that. Thank you. Mr. Miller. Oh, yeah, just touching on that. Um, you know, there, I understand it's a state road and things like that, but there needs to be some pressure put on uh, these, the UDOT, maybe some more pressure, more pressure on the city. Uh, we need to get this facility, this, these roads put in place to make sure that we can take care of everybody. It is a freaking joke around this town anymore to go anywhere. I'm going to be straight honest with you. It, it's ridiculous, and you all know it. So whether it's that intersection or any of the others, we've really got to put some pressure on and not be behind the eight ball as bad as we are on some other things that need to be taken care of that have lagged for so many years as it is. Thank you. As of 2019, 9.3% of adults in Utah reported an unmet need for mental health treatment. This was, this was higher than the national average of 6.2%. Given the growth expected in our region, this current unmet need will rise. Does Iron County have the capacity to meet an increased demand for addiction treatment and mental health services? If not, how will you address this? Mr. Miller. Uh, you know, I, I'm a big supporter of mental health, and it's a tragedy, the people that go through this. And, and we do have some great facilities here, um, you know, with the CJC, with also with uh, uh, Canyon Creek and stuff, to help with the mental illness. Do we have the facilities right now? We have small facilities. We need to grow. We need to get them bigger. We as a community, we need to support these nonprofit organizations and help them build up to help the community. Uh, these people that are in such great need and and a lot of them are seeking that need, but we just simply don't have the room right now. So I believe that needs to grow and I think we as a community need to help that grow. Uh, I, I support all of them 100% and I believe in, in helping people with mental issues right now and taking care of that, whether it be that or drug addiction or whatever it may be. Let's take care of our own and help out with these nonprofit organizations. Mr. Cousins. So a couple of things on that. Uh, Washington County just started the construction of a receiving center, which is exactly what that's for. Our, too many of our, our jails in the state turn into mental hospitals, and it's, it puts an undue strain on our law enforcement. And that's a receiving center where families can take people that in, are in need or law enforcement can take them there. They can agree to certain conditions, and, and they can help them where they really need help instead of just locking them up. Another thing we did recently is we approved some money. We, we just settled an opiate, opiate, opiate lawsuit with the feds on a, we, Iron County's going to receive about $120,000 a year for 18 years, and that's a perfect place to use those funds as these, these different programs. Um, 
Parowan just um, asked for some money for the Parowan Prevention Coalition. It's an awesome program. They have one operating in Penguitch, Utah, in Garfield County, and it's awesome. And uh, we allocated some money from that. And that's the only place that money can be used is for these kind of programs. And we're really excited that we can have some funds to help with, with, this, with this crisis. Thank you. Cedar City has by far the largest population of any municipality in Iron County. What specific plans do you have to support smaller communities such as Enoch, Parowan, Brian Head, and others? And Mr. Cousins, we'll start with you. Um, so one thing we did, we got about $10 million of ARPA funding from the federal government recently. This is one example of something we did. Um, we took about a million dollars that we've tried to earmark most of that money for a new jail, but we've taken about 10% of that, which is about a million dollars, and we've gone to the different communities like Newcastle and Canaraville and, and Paraguna, Bryanhead, Summit, these different communities. Everybody is in need of water infrastructure. And, and what we did is we went and we said, look, we're going to put in this much money, you match it, and then we'll take that to the state. And we, put, we, we gathered together a program where we could submit a, uh, an application to the state because they had federal funds as well to match. And so we were hoping that we can get, like, say, let's say Newcastle puts in $50,000, we match the 50, and then we take that to the state and they match it. That's four times their, four times their money. And we're waiting to hear if we get that uh, approved, but that's just one example of something we're doing to help some of the smaller communities in Iron County. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Can you, can you repeat that question? I'm sorry. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> Cedar City has by far the largest population of any municipality in Iron County. What specific plans do you have to support smaller communities such as Enoch, Parowan, Brian Head, and others? I think as a commission, one, one of the biggest ways you can support these smaller communities is listen to the citizens, hear their concerns, give them a seat at the table once again. And then we go and facilitate that by getting any amount of money we can to help out Enoch, Newcastle, Canaraville, whatever it is. Let's help them out with their issues, not just water issues, anything they've got going on. There's a lot of concern with growth, with water and everything else, but let's, as a community, or excuse me, as a commission, we need to go ahead and listen to the people and see what we need to do to help them. Um, like I said before, that's one thing that's very important to me because I can learn more from an individual that's been around for quite a while than I can just thinking I know what's going on all the time. So any input from the general public I think is important and we need to move forward with that and let them have a seat at the table. All right, thank you. We're gonna move ahead to closing statements and we'll first hear from Mr. Miller. Okay, well, <laughs> I went fast. Thank you um, once again for this opportunity. Um, I'm excited to serve this. This is my first time I'm serving and I'm, I'm glad to be doing it. I'm, I'm doing it for the right reasons. I'm taking a stance. I want some change. It's time for a change. There's been opportunity for too many years of things being stagnant. So, you know, I, I give me that opportunity. I'll prove myself. Integrity, trust, transparency, and small town values. That's what I stand for. I want to help the farmers. I want to help the ranchers. I want to help the community and I want to serve the community. I do it in so many ways with this community right now. Uh, there's so many other things that I do, and I want to help you. So you can learn more about me on my website at www.ironcountymillerforironcounty.com. Iron, Iron Excuse me, I forgot. Anyways, please, uh, I, I'm open book. Call me, reach out. I'll answer any question you may have, and thank you. Thank you. Mr. Cousins, your closing statement. Like a lot of people recently, 42 years ago, I moved to Iron County, and um, th this count I love Iron County. It's given me a place to realize the American dream. I went to school here at this institution, danced with my wife in this hall at <laughs> a school dance. Um, we, uh, we, we met each other here at school and, and had a family. We have three sons, uh, two adopted Chinese girls whom we love dearly. Um, we were able to build a business. Um, we were able, able to live the American dream and realize it. And this, this county and this city has given us that opportunity. Two of my sons own businesses in this town. Um, they have their homes. I have another son that lives up north. I got a daughter just leaving on a mission soon. But it's, it's just been a wonderful thing to be able to realize these dreams. Um, I want to build a future for our kids and grandkids. I am working hard with water and other infrastructure to make sure they have the needs they have. 
I don't want to export my kids and grandkids out of Iron County. I want them to live here with me. So we'll solve this problem. Thank you. All right, thank you. Let's give a round of applause for Commission B.